I showed up to worship God. I showed up to give him something. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, our worship is what we give unto our Father. So let's do that. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for who you are. Thank you that the Holy Spirit's here, ready, amen, and willing to do what the Father has planned for this service. And all we have to do is yield to him. Hallelujah. We make a declaration right now that we'll yield to you, Holy Spirit. Move and, and, and do what you need to be done in this service. We're going to say what needs to be said by the leading and the guidance of the Spirit tonight. Father, and I just thank you, Lord, that as believers operate by the Spirit, signs and wonders shall follow those who believe. We believe your word to be true tonight. Hallelujah. And we just stand on that word. Praise God. So if anybody here has an unction of the Holy Spirit tonight to do something, we're going to be obedient. Praise God. And I thank you, Lord, that you do lead your people and you do give give us direction and you do give us words of encouragement and you give us all the things that we need and we just thank you for that in Jesus name amen come on let's worship the Lord tonight and oh how I love Jesus songbook if you got one handy Thank right there turn to page Hallelujah. 158 page 158 Thank now Hallelujah. brother Ken said that he never heard of this song before yeah. and I, I want to see good, it. Uh, I it's going to be good <laughs> it's going to be good because it says the son has made me free now let's see how many here tonight have ever heard this song before amen it's in the red songbook boy my daddy used to sing this song all the time amen I was once in Egypt bondage, but deliverance came to me. I'm living now in Canaan for the 
sun and made me free. I am dwelling now in Canaan. Jesus' blood availed for me. I am free from condemnation for the sun that made me free. I was once a slave to Satan. He did his will in me, but I'm back. Son that made me free. I am dwelling now in Cana. Jesus' blood availed for me. I am free from condemnation. For the Son that made me free. Here I enter in Cana in red sin. Reminded me, but from it I found a cleansing for the sun that made me free. I am dwelling now in Cana. Jesus' blood prevailed for me. Oh, I'm free from condemnation for the sun that made me free. All my fears, all condemnation, all that stood twixt God and me. Oh, praise His name, are left behind me. For the Son that made me free, I am dwelling now in Canaan. Jesus' blood availed for me. For the sun that made me free, I am dwelling now in Cana. Jesus' blood prevails for me, and I am free from condemnation. For the sun that made me free. the Lord. Praise Thank the Lord. Jesus. Now I want you to notice something there in that song. That's an old song. It was written in 1905. And did you know that they believed that we were free from condemnation Amen. in 1905? Yeah. Amen. That just excited me right there because we think that we just come up with that. And in 1905, they were singing a song. I want us to do that one more little, just a verse of it again and just think about that Amen. because praise God there's always going to be a church I was talking to a brother this week on the phone and boy he I, I think he thought the church has absolutely died because they're in such bad shape. Well, I come to tell you that Jesus said, Upon this rock I will come build on. my church, come and on. the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, there's people that's got problems. There's people, there's churches that's got problems. But I want you to know there is a church that believes that we're not living in guilt and condemnation. Amen. Praise God. And they always have been and there always will be. And I'm glad I'm in a part of that church. Praise God. Because I'm not going to hell in a handbasket. Are you listening to me? I'm saved. I've thought about it. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And praise God, we are a powerful church. I was once in Egypt bondage, but deliverance came to me. Fails for me. I 
and I am free from condemnation for the Son that made me free. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You're awesome in this place. I'm a father.
praise the Lord. Amen. I can't even walk. Hallelujah. I can't even talk. Praise the Lord. Can't do nothing without the Lord holding my hand. Amen. Can't even breathe. Praise God. Man, that's how that's how important God is. That is powerful. Uh, we're going to get you to agree with us in prayer. Brother Sonny's got some things going on with vehicles that needs to be straightened out. So we believe in the favor of the Lord. Uh, like his word says, his own brother Sonny. Amen. God's favor can do some things. Amen. So we're going to believe that to, to uh, come to pass. Amen. Some things are going to get fixed. Things are going to get taken care of. Amen. Uh, also, uh, continue to remember Sam, he's uh, he's uh, on the mend. Praise God, he's getting better. Uh, amen. Had a little bit of a back, uh, you know, a little bit of a setback, but he's he's coming through it. Amen. So we're just going to continue to remember him in prayer and basically just thanking God that he's healed tonight. Yes. Amen. 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 That's where I stand. I I've uh, you know once you pray the prayer of faith, you ain't got to do that no more. You can just start thanking God. For whatever it is you're believing for. If it's healing, say, Lord, I thank you. To pray that right now, I believe by the stripes of Jesus that I receive healing. And then I can move from there to say, thank you, Lord, I am healed. Praise God, I ain't got to ask for healing no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then go ahead and operate by faith like we talked on Sunday. Lay your hands on somebody. Praise God. Let the, yes. let the Holy Spirit use you in the, in the um, ministry by the laying on of hands. Praise God. Amen. Uh, you know, all through the Word of God, anywhere that Jesus ministered, He operated in what He was ministering. Amen. So if He preached about uh, whatever it was He was preaching about, Amen. They seen a demonstration. That's why Paul said, "I, I don't come in uh, enticing words of men's win, uh, wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and in power." That's how Jesus operated. That's how we operate in the in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And uh, we're going to see that that power just completely uh, change some things in prayer tonight. Amen. So, uh, and then, of course, like I said earlier, let's continue to remember. Uh, and if you know somebody, you have something on your heart, during prayer, we can just lift them up before the Lord. Amen. Call them out before the Lord. And uh, we'll agree with you in faith concerning the Word. Amen. It's not enough just to be praying for you going to pray and get some results. We need to pray according to the Word of God. Amen. So we're going to do that. Brother Sonny, do you have another one? Okay. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hey, Amen. We're going to remember this. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> protection tonight. We can plead the blood over them babies. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to see a mighty hand of God over them. Amen. Actually, this was uh, the Holy Spirit. Don't, it ain't nothing just by chance. Me and my wife was just talking about this the other day. I was talking about how, and I can't remember who it was, but it was a testimony Brother Hagen gave. 
And I said, you know, when we get back to believing God and believing for the, the, the moving of the Holy Spirit and supernatural things to take place, not just dealing with this natural, but believing there is a supernatural that takes place when we submit to Him. Amen. It was a man over in Africa and he was in a hutch and he had a translator with him and he started. they started hearing all these sounds and he, the preacher asked the translator, said, what in the world is that? He said, that is a, that's a sound they do. They're fixed to come in here and kill all of us. And he said, well, let's join hands. So they joined hands and prayed. And then he said, let's get up and go out. When they walked outside that hutch, then people dropped their swords and they left. Later on, it was said that it said when they stepped outside there, that, that tribe leader said there was two real big tall men <laughs> in white standing beside him. That's that protection that they're going to experience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I still believe in angels. Amen. I believe that they can protect them. Praise yeah. God. I, there is nothing too hard for God. Yeah. Amen. And better than that, I believe that God can bring them out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to believe the Lord for that. Brother, Praise God. Brother John, yeah. I want to give a testimony to well, Sister yeah. Evelyn because... God is going to give you peace too about this. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, where you're not worried and yes. you're not frustrated. God's going to move the mountain and all you've got to do is just say to this mountain, in other words speak to that mountain uh, and, and, and it's going to change. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lady, dear friend of ours, lived in Atlanta, Georgia and she was the grandmother of, of uh, three granddaughters and their mother and daddy had just left them at a house over there there and she began to pray. She was a God-fearing woman praying just like you're doing here tonight. And she said, Lord, I want you to protect my, my babies, my grandchildren. And she said that God give her a scripture. And this scripture was this. Angels in camp round about them yep. that love God. Yes, sir. And she began to quote that scripture. The Bible says angels in camp round about them that love God. And she said that she got in her car and drove to Fayetteville, Georgia. And right before she pulled up to the house she looked and she physically, physically now she said it wasn't spiritually physically. She seen like John said, it was almost like eight foot tall guards that was walking the front and the, the outer perimeter and the back and the sides in full armor suit. It was angels, she said, seen that was walking in protection. That same spirit and that same God is doing for your children tonight. Right now. Come on, believe it tonight. Now, that on, same right spirit is sending angels as we're fixing to pray. When we pray, there's going to be literally armed guards that is going to, and they, the devil can come so far, but no further. Yes, sir. Because of the, the authority, Grandma, that you have. Come on. And you're taking that tonight, and we're agreeing with you to it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dispatch them. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Come on. Pray. Let's pray, and then we're going to turn Sister Linda loose tonight. Amen. She can come on up. Praise the Lord. Looking for a great, mighty thing to take place tonight. Amen. You heard the prayer request. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you tonight. For the power of your word, power of agreement. Right now, Father, we plead the blood over these babies. Hallelujah. Daughter and granddaughters and kids. And we just thank you, Father, that the blood is applied. Thank you, Lord, that the angels, hallelujah, we dispatch them to protect them. Keep your hands surround. Hallelujah. Everything can be going crazy all around, but they can be safe. Oh, thank God for And I just thank you tonight, God. We believe you for that. In in Jesus' name, Lord, I just honor you today for sending angels to camp around about us that fear and love you. We thank you for that, Father. So we just claim them to be safe tonight. We, we command and release any kind of dominion in that area. We command him to be uh, removed right now. We thank you, Father, for a, a divine connection for Brother Sonny on these vehicles that needs to be uh, taken care of, God. Thank you for the prayer request that he requested, God, I thank you, amen, that you have made preparation. Thank you that you've given us peace. Thank you, Father, that fear does not come from you. 
but peace is what you've given the church, and I thank you for that peace tonight. We thank you for each person that's here tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we'll be able to receive the Word of God with clarity tonight. Thank you, Lord, that the boldness is going to come forth as Sister Linda gets up to minister tonight. Thank you for clarity to every one of us that is hearing your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving revelation of the word tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, shout amen at me tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Linda. Make your way up this way. Give the Lord a hand tonight. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Father. Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be teaching tonight as I am led by the Holy Spirit on something that um, I haven't um, preached on before. Uh, the little Holy Ghost gave me this, and He wanted me to do it, and that's what I'm going to do. And it's on core values. What are core va values? And our what is our core values? And what are core values? And uh, God is good. He's good all the time. He, he knows exactly what we need and when we need it. Nothing that happens just happens. God knows all about it. He knew years ago what was going to be happening here today. He knew who was going to be here. And uh, He loves His children. I tell you right now, God loves us. If we only knew how much He really loved us, we would be shouting a victory. Come on. We would because He loves His children. Honda my Sunday, da da my Sunday. Uh, why core values? Maybe you've heard of core values before. Maybe not. It's a popular phrase in the business world and for good reason. An article by Forbes reads, Core values are the principles that a business aims to operate by. Shouldn't believers have principles that we purpose to operate by? They shouldn't be the mindset. They should also be the mindset that guides all relationships. If we can identify the core values we are to hold on to, we have a clear guide to how we are to relate to each other in our families, churches, and general, in society in general. C. Core values should also serve as a compass filter to navigate through our decision-making process. In a world full of deception, immorality, and godliness in general, our core value should A. Be the standard by which we measure every decision. Every decision. B. Keep us in the will of God. Using core values as guidelines ensure that every interaction, decision, move that is made has a purpose. It results in great clarity and integrity. Y'all, this is going to get better. I'm just laying down, letting you know what is core values and what they are. That's good. Having and living by the same core values create a culture in a family, a church, and an organization. What are core values? Let's define, define a core. A, a core is a central part of something. B, it is where seeds for reproduction are produced. C, it is central to its existence and character. D, that which is of greatest importance. What does value mean? A, one's principles or standards or behavior. B, one's judgment of what is important in life. 
put together what are core values. They are what we hold most dear. They are an internal compass guiding all decisions and actions. Uh, Terry and George Pearsons has a son named Jeremy. And uh, she said, our son Jeremy says, he was raised in the household of faith, walking by faith and ex exercising his authority as believers is still, as a believer is still how he lives his life, his values. Our core values are central to how we conduct our lives, guiding our thoughts, motives, and actions. Why? Because we believe them. We become rooted and grounded in them. Many years ago, Jerry Savell went to preach for a particular denomination. He preached an actual message of their founder. After he ministered, the leadership came to him and said, That was tremendous. Where did you get that teaching from? He replied, From your founder. It takes effort and diligence to not drift from our beliefs. It really does, y'all. If we think about it, it does. It takes effort and diligence not to drift from our beliefs. Core values is the popular term. A stronger word could be core beliefs. Believing comes out of the heart. <coughs> You want to bring up Romans 10, 9 through 10, New King James Version. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Each part, each person is a spirit being because mankind was made in the image of God. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And remember, God is a spirit. I won't bring that up. James 4.24 says God is a spirit. So believing comes from the heart or the spirit of a man. That's where the power is that directs our lives. Comes out of the heart or the spirit of man. That's where the power is that directs our lives. Jesus said, this is important, Jesus said in Luke 6.24, 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the mouth the heart speaketh. Abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Anything that your heart is full of will come out of your mouth. Yep. It don't matter what it is. You'll talk about it and live it, for better or for worse. From the abundance of the heart, your mouth leaks. That's what Gloria Copeland says. It leaks. Hallelujah. Biblical cores, that biblical core values, core beliefs, will reproduce heaven in your life. That is the truth. However, now, there's negative beliefs can run, it can ruin everything in your life, negative beliefs. So be on the watch. Uh, bring up Hebrews 2.15. I mean, 12, I mean Hebrews 12.15, AMC, AMPC. Y'all have to pardon me some tonight. Uh, having a little trouble with my eyes. <laughs> uh, but they're getting better and better and better, praise God. Hallelujah. So have our negative beliefs can ruin everything in your life. So 
looking diligently, lest any man full of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore many be defiled. Be on the watch that no root of resentment or rancor, bitterness or hatred. Rancor means a feeling of deep and bitter anger or ill will towards somebody or something or something on your job or something within the family or anything. Be on the watch. Psalms 41.3, bring that up just a second. Set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. I, I have to do that a lot. I'm telling you what I, now. I'm preaching to Linda tonight, and I know I'm not by myself because God gave me this, and this is something that we need. It's most certainly something I need. A lot of times on my way to church, I ask the Lord, Lord, put a watch in my mouth. Don't let me say something. Don't let me say anything that's not going to be pleasant or it's going to hurt somebody's feelings or whatever because I have a problem in my mouth. I'll be the first one to tell you I have a problem in my mouth. But I'm getting it under subjection to my spirit because I have authority over it and I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm just like y'all. I'm working on it. The train has left the station. Hallelujah. Be on the watch that no root of resentment, anger, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment. And the many become contaminated and defiled by it. We have to watch our mouths. We really do have to watch what we say. It wasn't long ago I hurt somebody's feelings in here. I, I'm the first one to admit, hey, I ain't perfect. But let me tell you something. I went back and apologized. I said, oh, that's okay. I said, no, ma'am, it's not okay. It's not okay for me to hurt your feelings. It is not okay. That ain't right. And they forgave me. So praise God. That's off of me. Just snap the fingers. I, don't have to, I didn't have to be concerned about it anymore. And I did lose a little sleep over it. I really did, to tell you the truth. But I don't worry about that no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You. Everything is filtered through our beliefs. Everything. Hallelujah. And about watching our mouths and stuff, um, don't get mixed up with other people's drama. Just don't do it. Don't get mixed up with it. Don't get mixed up with it. We have authority over a lot of things that we can pray about and uh, pray for right where we're at. We don't have to go to their house and get mix, mixed up with it. We don't. It's... Uh, I know uh, a little situation came up not long ago, and uh, something happened, and uh, drama come upon, and I just wouldn't have nothing to do with it, and I didn't have anything to do with it, because I've learned in the past, stay out of other people's drama. Because if you do take part in it, and then you find yourself in the middle of it, find yourself talking and saying things that you shouldn't, and then next thing you know, you tell somebody, and they tell somebody, and they tell somebody. It's like taking a newspaper and shredding it, and taking it in an airplane and throwing it out. out. There's no way you can get all that back. No way whatsoever. You know what an eagle does when he gets a hold of poison? Because they'll spew stuff out on you, or vice versa. You can spew stuff out on them. And what we have to do about that is like the eagle. We have to soar. He soars to the highest peak. And that word spread eagle, that's where it comes from. He soars when he eats something that's poisonous. All this stuff is spewed out on you is poison or that you're spewing out is poison. You, f you go to the highest peak and you spread eagle and let it's on the rocks. He goes to the highest rocks, right. mountain or whatever, and spreads eagle That's right. Right. and lets the sun draw it out of him. Every bit of it. We lay there, I don't care how long it takes. When I have in a fix like that, I go to prayer. I go to God. I soar just as high as I can in the Lord. And I'll pray and I'll pray till I, I, I pray through, as some people call it. But I'll pray and pray until I feel a release. I'll pray in tongues mostly. Because the enemy 
the devil, the crow that irritates the, at the eagle, he'll get on their back and irritate that eagle. Just irritate the way the devil does us sometimes. Just irritate us, irritate us. If we'll get in prayer, he can't go there. We can soar just, he, can, he soars to high. He just keeps soaring until he gets in an atmosphere the eagle can't breathe. The eagle has to, I mean, not the eagle, I'm sorry. Not the eagle, but where the crow can't breathe. The crow can't breathe up there. He can't, he can't go where you go. And he'll turn her loose. And then it's all over. Because you've, you've prayed through, you've, you've touched God about it. Uh, he knows all about it. And he loves us. And boy, he'll take care of stuff for us, I'm telling you. Cast all your cares on him. Every one of them. Don't even keep one. Say, Lord, I can't handle this. It's too much for me. But I know you can. Roll it over onto him. And I guarantee you he'll take care of it. And then you just forget about it. I know it's hard to forget about it, but we can. We can just plain forget about it while he's working. Yes. He's working for us. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, he'll straighten it out. He'll fix it. I don't care what it is. And next thing, it's because you stayed out of it. Stay out of things. Stay out of things. Hallelujah. Just pray about it. Hallelujah. 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 It's like Brother John told a story Sunday about a snake. What did you, Brother John? Did you tell the story about a snake? About a, about a woman took a snake in because he was hurt. Was it you, Brother LJ? Somebody, I heard this just this past week. A woman picked up a snake because it was hurting. It was in pain and hurting. And so she took it home with her because it was beautiful. And so she nursed it and nursed it back to health. And one day she went to work and she came home and that snake was so beautiful and healthy and just felt so just wiggling his little self all everywhere. And he bit her. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a venomous snake. It, it, it was for death. She was going to die. She said, why did you bite me? He said, well, you knew I was a snake before you, before you took me in. That's right. And that's the way a lot of right. the things, that cut thoughts and uh, suggestions and comes to us. If we take it in, it's going to kill us uh, spiritually. Right. If it's not the right words or, or, or it's wrong, it's going to absolutely kill us spiritually. And, and most of the time, we know it was wrong anyway. There was a time not long ago, I'm telling you, I'm telling on Linda tonight because I ain't perfect. But praise God, I'm, I'm soaring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I kind of got depressed over something. And I don't know if it was just for meanness <laughs> or what. But anyway, I just kind of just laid there, just kind of bathed in it a little bit. You know, kind of rebellious kind of like thing. You know, I just that there and I just, just sucked it all up, you know. And then a few minutes later, I felt so bad. Like somebody needed to get an egg spatula and scoop me up off the ground. <laughs> so I just said, oh, Lord, I, I come to myself. I said, uh-uh. Oh, this ain't going to happen. No siree. So I got up from there fighting with the word. I mean, I said, uh-uh, you get out of here. You ain't going to depress me. No siree. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get yourself gone right now in the name of Jesus. I ain't having this. And I just started, ha, 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 just, just walking up and down, ha, ha, ha. Because, see, your soul don't know that that is a ha, ha, ha laugh. It is like to, to the... To that realm, it's like your your belly rolling, laughing, you know, just laughing, you know, and so just ha 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 ha. Even there was a hospital that uh, was giving lessons on laughing, so the people would get better because they were sick, and if they could laugh, just ha 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 ha. ha. I did a lot of that tonight on the way to church tonight. I went ha 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 ha, devil, you know, because I had a little mm, right before church, you know. That's okay. That is okay because I got rid of it. I knew what to do about it. You know, just, just ha, ha, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Ha, 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 ha. I just ha, 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 myself happy. So hallelujah, and I'm here and I'm happy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are core values? 
These are what we have identified as the most important values or beliefs to hold on to as believers. They are A. We put the word of, with seven of them, it's seven core values that's very important for the Christian. We put the word of God first place. Amen. First place, that's one. Amen. We live by faith, that's two. We walk in love, three. D, we are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sister Janice just taught on that. Brother John has taught on all of these seven core values. Every one of us has taught on it. Every one of us. This is nothing new to us. But these are core values that we are to live by. Hallelujah. We pray about everything. We protect the anointing. Last but not least, we honor God. Amen. Brother Keith back there brought a thing on it, of, of the word on it, a message on it. Brother Jerry just got through preaching Sunday. Uh -huh. Sister Janice about the Holy Ghost. Brother John about the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, these are core values, and we need them. We need to write down every scripture we can. Write it down. Take it home. Mull over it. Chew on it. I'm going to tell you something. If you'll do that, I promise you. God will make that scripture come alive to you. It'll be so alive to you. I mean, there's so much death in one scripture. Sister Janice T taught a solid year on one scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've been doing some of that. And I love it. There is no end to the word. It is so good. You chew on it and chew on it and chew on it and regurgitate and chew some more and chew some more. Next thing you know, you got another one. You're doing the same thing. Hallelujah. Down the line, maybe a week or two, you're going to need it. And some of this stuff I'm teaching tonight. We're going to need it. I needed it today, and I got it. Hey, I needed it last week. I may need it tomorrow. I may need it in the future. All of these core values can be summed up in both the first and the last. The first one was we put the Word of God first place. The last one was we honor God. We have a better picture of the standards as we hold ourselves to. If we'll just listen, write these standards down and live by them. By breaking these down, we have a better picture of the standards we hold ourselves to. My eyes playing a little bit of tricks on me tonight. That's okay. We're going to get her done. Why do we need core values? The days we live in are like the days of Noah. Full of hatred for God. No value for life. Debased, violent, wicked. Oh, it's wicked. Debased is degrading. People's always degrading you, trying to degrade you. They're degrading each other. Hallelujah. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute because I have a testimony of that. Full of hatred for God. Why do we need core values? The days we live in are like the days of Noah, full of hatred for God, despising anything good. Wars on top of wars. You hear wars with family, wars with neighbors, wars with at work, wars on top of wars. All kinds are seen. We see them every day. You can't even turn the TV on without seeing wars and wars. People are people calling others intolerant. And then killing or harming those who don't agree with them. Lord have mercy, we've seen a lot of that. The earth is revolving under the pressure of sin with catalytic weather. Disease and earthquakes res resulting in famine and death. I'm going to go back to up here. Wicked and no value for life. There is no value for life. Just look at all the babies that's being killed. Just look at abortions. Of they, no value for life. Kidnapping kids and taking them over to Mexico. All this stuff that's just no value for life. Just none whatsoever. Look at the drug addicts just taking drugs and overdosing. No value for life. Ha la la la, my Sunday. I want to, there was a young woman a couple of years ago. And I don't know why the Lord wants me to bring this out, but he does. He let me know today that he did. Uh, and she was contemplating an abortion. 
her mother had told her that she had to get an abortion because they couldn't raise it. Wasn't no more room for babies and stuff. They couldn't raise it. So, righteous indignation rose up inside of me. I said, honey, that's murder. You know, and I says, that ba I, I, I gave her scripture. I'm going to read this scripture that I gave her. I said, that, that is not God. That, that is not, don't kill that baby. Please don't kill that baby. It is murder. There's, I can give you the scriptures for it. I can give you the scriptures. And I give her this scripture, Isaiah 1 and 5. I said, I said let, me, let me tell you. Before I was formed in the belly, I knew thee. Before I, my eyes again, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He knew us before we were formed in the belly. And thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee and I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. I said, this, this is Jer Jeremiah. If they would have boarded Jeremiah, we wouldn't have had that prophet. He, he besides before, he knew him before. He done had his life planned out for him, evidently. And before thou comest out of the womb, he done sanctified him and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nation. Please don't kill that baby. She started, I said, as, as that little old baby is in you and God's forming it and already got his life planned out, I said, you going to abort it? Do you know they're going to snatch that baby right out of the hands of God? I said, you she started boo-hoo-hooing and crying. I mean, boo-hoo-hooing and crying. And she said, I didn't know that. I said, it's alive. It is alive. It's not dead. It has a heartbeat. It's alive. Don't do it. Oh, she was just, oh, I won't. I won't. I didn't know it was alive. Nobody never told me that. Nope. They just said it was a substance. Mama said it was just a substance, just a drop of nothing. You know, nothing wrong with it. But pray Praise God, I had the answer for her. And I don't know why I'm saying this tonight, but maybe somebody that you know may be going to have one or, or, or wants to have one or somebody in the future you may run into that's going to have one, you know. But if anybody, even the sound of my voice on YouTube or anywhere, if you have had abortion, God is not mad at you. He does not hold you. If you are a Christian and that's something in your past, He has forgiven you. But right now, we're talking about right now, a now God. Right now, we can do something about it with the Word. We, we can. As people come to us with these, we can have the answer for them. Give them the Scripture. Show them in the Bible where it is. It's murder. It's pure murder. That baby's two years old today and healthy as it can be. And I praise God. God that it's alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Without these values at our core, the pressures in the world and deception of the age will steal, kill, and destroy. Without these values at our core, the pressures in the world and deception of this age will steal, kill, and destroy. It is possible, now this, so don't go away telling everybody, well, Sister Linda's preaching against this, preaching against that. I'm like Brother Jerry said Sunday. Now, it is possible to influence society and be relevant, yet remain grounded in who we are. To do so, we must know what we are called by Jesus to do and be grounded in our values to such a degree that outside elements cannot move us. We can go into the world and preach the gospel or lift somebody up or whatever. I'm not saying don't ever go here, don't ever go there. No, I'm not saying that. If somebody needs you, you know, and they asking you to come over for something. You do have the authority when they call you over there. You have the authority to pray for them or to minister to something, whatever. I'm not saying don't ever do it. Because if we're where we need to be in the Lord and we're led of the Lord, the Lord leads us, we pray about it first and we go on over there. Lord leads us to, to such a degree that outside elements cannot move us. It won't bother us, it won't touch us, it won't nothing follow us home or because God is in control of that. Romans 12 and 2, King James Version. New King James Version. Do not be conformed to this world 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be camouflaged, conformed to this world. Don't try to camouflage yourself and go into the world. There is Christians, I'm telling you, there is Christians that does camouflage himself. They go to, I, I know, they go to bars, they go here, or they go there, whatever. That is a big no-no. Right. What has light have to do with darkness? We were transferred out of darkness into the light. That's right. And we don't need to, well, we don't. I know nobody in here does. Or what it, somebody on Facebook, somebody that listened to the sound of my voice just might do that. Right. Go out and, and do, go to bars and, and, and uh, sit around with people and listen to nasty jokes. Uh, they cuss, you know, you might pick up on it and might say an ugly word or whatever. We are not to be camouflaged into this world. We are Christians. Yes, God will forgive us because he has forgiven us. And we will can be forgiven for that. But let me tell you something. It don't feel good once you step out across that faith line. It don't feel good. So be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds, that you may prove what is that good and accepted and perfect will of God. Pray about everything. Everything. I do. I pray about everything anymore. I mean, it don't matter what. If I get up and go to the rest of the Lord Jesus, be with me. Dark my house. Hallelujah. We must, A, from this scripture, A, we must renew our minds to what the Bible says. As the word drops down on the inside of us, these values become intrinsic. They become natural. And we reproduce them in our lives. It becomes a way of life. Just becomes a way of life. Sunday morning, it, that's church time for Linda. I'm going to church. No matter what, ain't nobody going to keep me out of church. I got authority over this little old body right here. I'm going to church. Hallelujah. It just becomes natural. The more we dig in the Word, the more re personal relationship we have with the Lord, it just becomes natural to us. You know, that's the way we live. That's our values. That's just the way we are. Hallelujah. We intend now there's some people that can't like don't get what I said about going to church wrong, because it's sometimes we can't. Sometimes we got babies sick. Sometimes we have a little bit of a there's some problems we can't do anything about it. I'm not saying you gotta go to church every Sunday. No, we're not in bondage to that. No, we, we do it because we want to. It's the way of our lives. That's just the way we are. Hallelujah. And anyway, if you're not in church, I guarantee you, I know everybody in this building right here, they're not in church on Sunday morning. I guarantee you they're having church. Wherever they're at, they're having church. They may have it in a motel room. They may have it at a family's house or whatever, but I guarantee you they're talking about God. Hallelujah. Praise God. C, we internalize these core values by acting on them. Uh, this is not just a memorization list. We put the Word of God first. We put the Word of God first place. First place is the Word of God. Second, we live by faith. Third, we walk in love. Fourth, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We've been getting a lot of that. And we've got a lot of these and different uh, messages from different ministers in here. We pray about everything. We protect the anointing. Protect the anointing. Y'all, we got to protect the anointing. Handa basante. Don't take the anointing here, there, and yonder. We got to protect it. We honor God. We honor God by coming to his house and worshiping and praising him. We honor him. Look what he's done for us. Oh, my God. He hung up there on that cross and took uh, uh, all the curses that was on us, took them on him. No pain, no sorrow, no grief. We're not supposed to have any of that. No pain. Every time I get a pain, I start praying against it. Every time I quote that, that I come to Galatians and, and read that, no pain, no pain. He took our pain. And the more I pray against that pain, the better it gets. And that, that next thing you know, I'm not hurting anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
There is one other thing that I skipped right over here about, about the baby, about the baby that was aborted. Uh, that scripture in Jeremiah 1, 5, do you know this is one of the verses that a lot of people hate because it clearly brings to the attention the sovereignty and control of God. It brings, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. This is one of the verses that a lot of people hate because it clearly brings to our attention the sovereignty and the control of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, anyone can preach, but is it the Word? I've heard a lot of preachers preach. Some of it wasn't the Word. Hallelujah. I want to go in to the first value. I've got about 15 minutes because this is so important. This is what the values are, what they're about. Uh, I'd only need about 15 minutes. Y'all got 15 more minutes y'all can give me? Hallelujah. It's only about three pages. Why core values review? I'm going to review what I just, for just a second. Core values are what we, we hold most dear. They are an internal compass guiding all decisions and actions. They are central to how we conduct our lives, guiding our thoughts, motives, and actions because we believe them. Believing according to Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart we believe. Living by these core values will pre-produce heaven in your life. The believer establishes in his or her beliefs, the believer establishes in his or her beliefs, shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. That's Psalms 112, 6-8. Our core values again, we put the Word of God first. First place. First place is the Word of God. Anything we go to do or say anything, put the Word first. I am trying, I am going to end up learning all seven of these by heart, and I want to start walking in them. We live by faith. We walk in love. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We pray about everything. We protect the anointing, and we honor God. Core value number one, we put the Word of God first. What word is first? Whose word? The Word of God. I think Brother Jerry taught on some of this Sunday, or preached a little bit on it. I know somebody did in here. Don't treat God's Word casual like you may treat others and yours. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God and His Word are one. Amen. One and the same. God and His Word are the same. They don't differ. Can you say that I've heard your Word, then I've heard you? Can you say that? Yes. What you should, what you should, what you say should be what you mean. Amen. What you say should be what you mean. Amen. Hebrews 4 12 through 13. For the word of God is living. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and ten cents, uh, intents of the heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Life and death is in the tongue. Life and death is in that word. We can speak the word for life or we can speak a word for death. And I'd rather speak the word of life. Hallelujah with my tongue. This verse calls the word him. And Sister Janice taught on this. I was so happy when some of this was in this book on core values. This verse calls the word him. The very word itself is him. The word is living, not dead, words on a page. 
The word is powerful. The word that's in us is P-O-W-E-R, power, F-U-L-L, full. We are powerful people. We are powerful. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1 and 3, King James Version. Upholding all things by the word of his power. It's not power that delivers his word. It is his word that delivers power. His word. So we have to speak his word because that's where the power is. That's what this is saying. If you want some power, get in his word and speak his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you start seeking power without the word, you will fall short. You may end up with something that is not in line with God's word at all. Seek the word with the understanding with the understanding, seek the word with the understanding that power is in the word. Then the power is there. The power of God is inherent to the word. Not the word inherent to power. That word inherent means permanent. His power is permanent in the word. Permanent. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ain't going to change. The word is the sword that divides between soul and spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. You live in a body, and it takes the word to define those and give purpose and the right priority to each one. Because the word of God is God, it ministers to all three parts. Faith to your spirit, peace for your soul, help for your body, often all at the same time. Hallelujah. It discerns the thoughts and even the intentions of your heart. Hallelujah. It will speak to the it will speak to you based on the thoughts you have today. Somebody said this Sunday or a few days ago. The word, it will speak to you based on the thoughts you have today. Then tomorrow, it will say something fresh to you because your thoughts have changed. The word is always right. Amen. All, the word is always right now. Yes. Right this minute. We have the word right now. Yes, Not yesterday, today, yet it ain't got here, but we got the word right now, y'all. Because God is right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. How many, when you need God, you need Him now? Whether it was yesterday, if it was yesterday, you needed Him now. You need Him. I needed Him when I almost choked to death. I remember Brother, Sister Jerry, Sister Janice and Brother Jerry went on a trip and, and, and came back and went down an embankment, and all Brother Jerry hollered with Jesus. Yeah. Boy, now, now God, we need it. He's a now God. We needed him now. There's lots of us that's in here has called on the Lord at the last minute. Right? He needed him right now. Right now. And he was there. Yes. The word is now. Amen. You know, we sent the word to her daughter. That word ain't going to come back void. No, no. That word is going to go and accomplish that to where it was sent. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother John, I heard him send it. Yeah. And we was agreeing with him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. 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 Don't put pressure on people. And don't pressure on your, or don't put pressure on yourself. Put pressure on the Word. Put the pressure on the Word because it will not break. Amen. It ain't going nowhere. It's not going to break. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How reliable is the Word? I'm going to just read these. We, these won't come up uh, because of time. Matthew 24, 35. How reliable is the Word? His Word shall not pass away. Isaiah 40 and 8. The Word of our God shall stand forever. Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God stands true. John 17, 17. His word is truth. And the truth makes us free. 1 Peter 1, 23. The word is incorruptible. It won't break or bend under pressure. 
Psalms 119, 130. I love this, LJ. You introduced this word to me. You introduced this scripture to me a few weeks ago. The entrance of his word brings and gives light. Yes. I love that. I love that. The entrance of that word gives light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting drunk up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33. What does it mean to put the word first place? He said, every, we, we read this so much, Sister Janice has brought this to us so much, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The word is preeminent. It's superior. Everything else is compared to the word. Everything else is compared to the word and measured by it. Amen. Three, we put the Word of God first place and make it final authority in our lives. We trust and rely on it the way we would the Word of a doctor, lawyer, or our best friend. This means we go to it first, the Word. It's the first thing in our day. We read the Bible each morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We go to it first for answers and direction. All else is secondary. All else is secondary. If something opposes what the Word says, then out it goes. Amen. We give the Word attention, more attention than anything. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Gloria Copeland had, uh, she read the Gospels and Acts in the Amplified Bible three times in 30 days. I think Sister Janice brought this out. She committed to put the word first. She said she was going to do it, and she was committed to it. In spite of being unpacked in her new house with small children, yet as she obeyed the Lord and took time to do this, supernaturally she was able to get everything done. When you put the word first place, it will promote you. It will put you first. So always put that word first, and the rest of it will make room for itself. I mean, you know, you can be in one end of the house in just a second, and the, and the next you're going to be at the other end of the house. Amen. Boy, I sure got here quick. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We order our lives by the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring this out because I, I, it needs to be brought out. Oh, no... Romans 13 and 8. I don't think I got it on my list, but Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Amplified says keep out of debt. This was one of Brother Copeland's things, and I'm going to tell you something. Ken and I tried the word, and it works. We've been doing this. He said, Brother Copeland says, how will we ever have a decent car? Much less an airplane. Gloria thought, how am I going to ever have a nice house? They determine if that's what the book says, then that's what we will do. Well, I determined not long ago, the house we lived in got tore up by the storm. And the only thing they gave us was for the roof. That was it. That was it. That was all. The rest of it, we prayed up. Yeah. rest of it, he showed us. Ken has always been a hoarder. And uh, everything that they was left over at work, he bring it home. I mean, you ought to see, we got three sheds that's full of stuff. I mean, expensive stuff, because he worked on a lot of expensive houses. He had a lot of expensive stuff. I didn't know it was for me for years later. I wouldn't have said nothing. I wouldn't have got on to him for being such a hoarder. But anyway, he took a lot of that stuff and put it into the house. We had a, uh, the Lord just spoke to me, and I said, well, Lord, we need this and that and other. He said, there's money in the ground. I said, what do you mean there's money in the ground? I didn't understand what he meant by that. He said, there's money in the ground. He had an old truck sitting back there in the back. The, the wheels was in the ground because there was no truck. And so he fixed it up or whatever, and he put it out front to sell it. And um, do you know what he asked for? Um, he put it, I think Keith, his brother, was sitting right there. Put it on line for him or something. And a man way down south now, he was a preacher. He needed that truck 
for parts, I think. But anyway, he came down here and he gave Ken exactly and little more than what he wanted for it. Amen. Now that was God. That was God. Yeah. I mean, there was money in the ground. And then another time, he got behind on his taxes. I'm telling on him. It's his own fault. He got behind on his taxes. And the uh, Lord still says money in the ground. I thought, Lord, where? We didn't see it. You know, we didn't have that kind of money. But anyway, his kids got a hold of it. And they went down and put the money in the bank for him and paid them. Money in the ground. Ken, they, they made out of dust. They made out of dirt. That's ground. Money in the ground. He sowed a lot of seed into them youngins and give to them and help them all their lives. So they decided to help their daddy back. Money in the ground. Those kids went down and paid his taxes for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So God has been doing, it's been that kind of ways that we've been able to do this and that and the other. I mean, we've been hopping around that house doing things. People wonder, where they get rich from? Where they get money? I mean, we got a all new flooring. We only like two bath two bathrooms now, putting it down, and there's two other rooms that we haven't touched yet. We're not concerned about that now. We're concerned about where we live. We got a beautiful porch. Oh my God! I mean, just God has just had showed us a way to get it. We have not borrowed not one dime. And uh, my truck's paid off. Ken don't like but an inkling on that truck. But God told us to stay out of debt. Don't borrow no money. He will provide. Amen. Work my word. Trust me. Believe in me when I tell you something. And that's what we've been doing. And so whenever I need something... I just go to my source, and I'm going to tell you something now. I ain't going to stand up here and hurt my anointing, but I always end up getting it. I might not get it today, but I will get it right down the road. I always get what I need, because he said that it would be there when I needed it. And every time I've needed it, it's been there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know I'm taking up too much time, but I only like just the inkling. Hallelujah. They knew they had to move more. Okay. They were like me. I knew that I had to have more than one verse to stand on. But uh, they knew they had to have more than one verse. So they studied to show themselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show you, you're thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, Brother Jerry brought that out one time. I didn't, I didn't really quite understand that, that he brought it out. We study to show ourselves approved. I study when I, when I oh, when I get it, man, I got it. I have, you're right, I'm approved. Boy, when I'm approved, I can do a lot more within the Lord than I could before I learned this scripture. I just love this scripture. I just study to show thyself approved unto workmen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Once they made the commitment, the word began to work for them. Not only did they come out of debt, but they discovered how the blessing would prosper them. Lord, that bl our blessings has prospered us. I just love the Lord. And when I did come across this and read this, I said, Lord, that sounds like us. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm on the right page. When trouble, but now when trouble came, sickness came, our friends left. We did what we were trained to do. Went to the Word. By His stripes I am healed. Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love that. 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes, I was healed 2,000 years ago. I was healed before I was even saved. Didn't know it. Didn't know it. He done provided for me. Before I got saved, didn't know it. Hallelujah. Five years ago, I started getting the truth of the word. More things started to happen. But before then, I couldn't hardly get up. A flea to get off of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I learned by his stripes I 
am healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I received a bad medical report, the Holy Spirit quickened the response to my spirit. I declared my healing is already an accomplished fact. The Lord delivered me out from under depression. I, I told you all about that. The preeminent question in the life of every believer, every Christian family must be, what does the Word say? For the word to have final authority, we must change our lives to line up with the word, not try to make the Bible fit our lifestyle. John 1 and 14, and I'm closing. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We'll review just a second. While I'm closing, core values are the values we hold in such esteem that we guide our lives by them. They are our filter and compass. They are central to how we conduct our lives, guiding our thoughts, motives, and actions because they are what we believe. Our identity must be based in who the Word of God says we are. Everything else will be subject to what we believe about who we are in Christ. Believing comes out of the heart or the spirit of man or the spirit of man. That's where the power is that directs our lives. Once again, what are core values? We put the Word of God first place. We live by faith. We walk in love. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We pray about everything. We protect the anointing. And we honor God. And I hope that y'all got as much out of this as I am. Amen. And I'm going to turn the service over to Brother John or Brother Jerry.